Hi there everyone, this is just my little introduction. This is uh, Russ Douglas 222. I'm here in Ma Bruce's man cave, and this isn't your average man cave. I mean, we've got the power supply blinking away there, and that really is an oscilloscope. You know, the sort of bing, bing type thing, you know what I mean. We've all seen Monty Python's uh, Mini Life. Anyway, I'm here in the man cave to chat to the man himself, Bruce. That's Phoenix from the UK Night Vision Forum. Mealy Jimmy from the Airgun Forum. We're going to chat about the, the new laser standards. This is for IR torches. And we've got a, a new torch, kindly on loan from Trevor from Advanced IR UK. And he's had it certified to the existing and the new standards. So uh, without further ado, I'll show you Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Good to see you. Good morning, Ross. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, I think we're all good. And we're here beside some more of Bruce's gadgets. Uh, he's currently got a camera on this uh, photography uh, measurement device. This is also where he puts his IR light meter when he's got a scope like the PAD DS3550 RF here. Or, or one, a torch like or, that. Or an IR torch like this. This is where he puts things, if he's photographing the pill or the, the diode, which is like the bulb for the layman, and also when he's measuring the IR output. Fancy gadgets here. We've got all the technology and we've got the man who knows. So uh, <laughs> the reason for the video, Bruce, we've previously done a video a couple of years ago now, which people are still watching, done in this uh, very cave over, the, over there. Basically, the, the video was pads are not illegal. And I'll put a link to, down below to that. And also to the UK Night Vision Forum posts where Bruce revealed some of the information, some of which, and we have to be, we have to say thanks as well to um, Clive. Clive Ward, yeah. Clive Ward for, for deciphering some of these standards. So bottom line was the IR illuminators on the original PAR 008 and since then the WS and now the DS35, they're not illegal because although the pill within here is a laser pill, the emissions fall under the lamp standard as long as they meet the criteria. So, what have we discovered recently, Bruce? M myself as a layman, I've heard some chatter on the forums yeah. and such like that. There's new IR standards around, <clears> and everyone was scaremongering for a little while that all IR torches, like these two superb fellas, we've got the Wraith Light from Andy at Ludicrous Lumens, and we've got the Solaris SRX V2 from Trevor at Advanced IR. Okay, you've now put in a lot of work on this, Bruce, because you're a star, and you've got down to the nitty gritty, yeah? But I spent a fair bit of time reading the standards and trying to understand them and trying to see how they apply to the products we are using in our shooting. And there was a bit of a panic a wee while back because there's a, an, a, a new version of the laser standard came out with a couple of amendments that were supposed to clarify things but actually made things a little bit less less clear. <laughs> um, and there's also another new standard which has just come in the go regarding specifically what they call consumer laser products. And these would all be consumer laser products. If Even if you're a professional pest controller and you use one of these, because Joe Bloggs could buy one of these, it's a consumer laser product. So yeah. this new standard defines what's meant by a consumer laser product. And I wanted to make sure that we understood what all the implications were and to find out whether or not these products like the PARD, these illuminators, can be classified as consumer laser products. And the outcome of that is, yes, they can. Yeah. So there's no reason to get excited about them going out disappearing off the market. They do have to meet certain requirements, but we've kind of discussed that previously, but we'll kind of go over that again. Yeah. Um, the important thing is that the product, whether it's the PAR DS or PAR 008 or an 007 or any of these torch type illuminators, they have to be designed to operate like a conventional lamp. Yeah. That's the big deal. The, the laser standard deals with primarily things that we would call traditional lasers, yeah. like pointers and range finders and, and things that used to cut steel, high power lasers, lasers with very narrow beams. And they are, they've got fairly strict limits on power and so on. And those limits have got stricter now, haven't they? They've got stricter and there's, cl there's classes, class one, class two, class three, class four and subclasses. And the higher the number, the higher the power. And basically the situation is that Class 3B lasers, trading standards are not really that happy with Class 3B lasers, but they'll kind of, if it's a, if it's not like a, one of these bright green or bright red lasers that you would use to shine at a car or shine at an aeroplane, you know, they, they want to get too excited. 
Um, in class four lasers, which are more powerful still, they don't want the public getting their hands in those. Yeah. What happens with these things is that <clears throat> these DS35 and these torches, they don't emit these very tight narrow beams. They're they're designed to illuminate. They produce a much wider beam. Yeah. So they can illuminate an area, and the standard recognizes that, and it lays down some rules about what exactly these torches have to be able to do in simple terms how wide the beam is and how bright they are without yes. getting too technical yeah the white if, if the beam is wider than a certain size and the brightness is less than a certain limit then they can be classed as conventional lamps yes okay what that does it then separates the physical device from the light that it produces yeah the light that it produces is then classified under a different standard. It's called the lamp standard. Yeah. And its brightness of the lamp is then placed in what's called a risk group. Risk yeah. group zero, risk group one, risk group two, risk group three. Now, I can tell you for nothing that all of these torches would be risk group three, yeah. which is a very intense lamp. And although these are IR and they don't look bright, they are very, very, very bright. Yeah. But there are no legal limitations on lamp brightness in the way there is to laser power. Yeah. So all of these, although they're very bright lamps, they're all going to be what we call risk group three, they're perfectly legal for sale. Yeah. And perfectly legal for use. Yeah. And as I said, once a device meets the requirements of being a conventional lamp, then we measure the light that it produces against one standard. And then that means that the physical device drops into what's called a class one laser. Yeah. Okay. And being a class one laser, it means it can be classed as a consumer laser product. Yeah. If you didn't class it as a class one laser, it would not be a consumer laser product and it couldn't be placed on sale. Simple yeah. as that. So it's a fact that it can be a convic- class as a conventional lamp. The light that produces is measured against a different standard. The device itself remains a class one laser, and therefore it can be classed as a consumer laser product. Right. There's, so a, one, there's a couple other minor tests that have to be done to confirm it's a class one laser product, but I would my strong suspicion is that all of these would easily pass that extra requirement and be yeah. af- officially class one laser products and meet the requirements to be placed on sale um, as complying with this new standard. Yeah, and including this new torch from uh, Trevor, <clears throat> the, every, all, all these laser products that emit, uh, they're basically lamps that have a laser source within them. Um, they, they need, they all need a warning sticker. And here we've got invisible laser radiation, avoid exposure to beam. And on the other side, it says warning, bright IR light, possibly hazardous optical radiation emitted from this product. Do not look into the operating lamp, may be harmful to the eye. Those words relate back to the lamp standard. Yeah. Whereas the warning, invisible laser radiation, avoid exposure to beam, it relates more to the laser standard. Yeah. Um, so you've, you've basically, you've got, you've got to put on warning labels that cover both yeah. the different standards. And, and the bottom line is, you don't ever look into the beam. Could you switch one of these on, Bruce, actually, and just shine it on the desk? So if in doubt, you look through a mobile phone. Okay, so Bruce has got, one of these, this is the new uh, sort of Solaris SRX V2 that Trevor's had certified to the new standards. And if Bruce switches it on. There we go. So now it's more obvious and you've got that pink dot of light. So that's with the head of the... Torch fully forward. Fully forward, so which is screwed uh, clockwise. So that, that was the beam brightened and now gotcha. he's... So that's it going back to flood. Yeah, back to flood. No, and then forward for spot. Yeah, and that's forward to spot. And if I turn the power down, you should see it. Right. Yeah, you can see it getting dimmer and dimmer. Okay, so that's how you look at one of these torches and you don't ever look into the beam. And of course, it's got it's got a warning light to tell you that it's the power is switched on. Even though the power's at low, if, can you see that? The, the, yeah, there we go. There's the warning light in the base, which all good uh, IR torches have got, which lets you know when it's on or off. And then we've got a, a rotary power dial. 
Okay, yeah. brilliant. Not the lightest torch we've ever seen, but it's but it's well made. That's yeah, so that. so that's 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 a well made torch. It is a bit of a beast. It's a little bit what heavy. It's quite big. It's four hundred odd grams. Yeah, it's four hundred odd grams. I'll put the exact weight on the screen here. It takes a single one eight six fifty battery, which is pretty much industry standard. And this new Night Saber Wraith Light L I T E from Andy at Ludicrous Lumens. That's also takes a one eight six fifty, but he's he's slimmed down this. He's made this one a bit more lightweight. I'm just checking this. I think that's, so that's twenty five millimeter. So you can yep. get one with a twenty five mm ring there. Yeah. That's thirty. Yeah. And that's thirty four. Okay. For people that are using like thirty four oh, mil, right. thirty four mil diameter scopes. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's so long to get three different. All right. Okay. Three so you've got different three different diameters there. Three different mounting options. So if you've got thirty four mil rings, then you can clamp on that. Excellent. Okay, so the next stage will be, uh, I need to get testing these at night, and I'll be testing these through the DS3550 RF, DS3570 RF, through the new Height Micro Cheetah C32F RL, and also through the, thanks to Ian Blackwood of Blackwood Outdoors, Bruce has got on loan at the moment, the Pulsar C50. Okay, so that's all to come. So we're just doing a little test here. Bruce has got the new Solaris SRX V2. He's pointing it at the garage door and we've got Bruce's little camera set up here and you can see on this screen, you can see the beam. So the recording is being done on the phone here. And if you come down a bit, Bruce, down, 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 down yeah, you need to be that sort of, around about that tape measure for me to record it. Okay? If I'm going to try and do, I'm going to walk, try to walk towards this. We're trying to find out there's a point in the beam that's more intense than right in front of the, the lamp. Yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, I, oh, yeah. sorry, you can't see it, can you? No. no. Uh, so to the right, to the right, to the right, that's you above the end of the tape. The right hand, the left hand end of the tape? Right hand end of the steel rule. Okay, fair enough. Okay, I've got that. Right, I'm going to start walking in now. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to block the view, am I? Oh, you're just, your elbow's just starting to block it now, but, yep, there we go. So that's you up to the door, right up to touch the door. Okay, and the beam is the, is the size of the objective lens of the, uh, the torch. Okay, so at no point during that test did the beam narrow down and then widen out again, Good. which which proves that this torch is compliant. What it means is that there's no beam waste, and as long as the I'll switch it off, as long as the the power at the closest point of uh, access, which will be there, as long as the power through a 3.5 millimeter aperture does not exceed 500 milliwatts, then it complies with BS50689, the new yeah. consumer laser standard. Yeah. So that's that's one criteria that 506, 50689 added in 2021 that all laser emitters have to comply with. Any 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 class one laser product that wants to meet the requirements of BS50689 must not produce uh, or radiant power or emit power more than 500 milliwatts at any point along its beam from the closest point of access to anywhere else. Well, you're not going to get more than 500 milliwatts. I mean, we've moved in from about five meters to the door, so there's no. Some torches can produce a beam that starts out wide, it narrows, and then it widens out again. Yeah. And we're trying to find that in that, what called the beam waste. That's what we were trying to find out, if yeah. there was a beam waste. In, the, in this, and there's in no this beam torch, waste. there wasn't. Okay. No. Okay, and we're just going to do the same test. Can you see? Just going to do the same test. Yep, there we go. Okay. I'll, I'll move in now. Okay. So the beam is naturally narrowing as Bruce gets closer. There, there we go. No, nothing. No, no, it didn't narrow down and then widen back out again. That's the Ludicrous Lumens Night Saber Wraith Light from um, Andy at Ludicrous Lumens. That also passes the BS50689 test. Let's try it with pad. Yeah, Bruce is going to try it with my pad DS3550. I can do this by looking through the fucking scope. Oh, of course. So if you look at the round right about the end of the tape measure, and I'll record the end of the tape measure for the viewers and myself. Front left button, isn't it? There we go. We have a square beam there. 
Or okay. sorry, rectangular beam. Okay. Sorry, yeah, that's okay. And you're getting closer. You're not, you're not obscuring the beam at all. Cool. I'm no so close that I can't see the beam in it. Yeah. Well, you're on the end of the tape measure. Yep. So that's perfect. So Bruce has just proved... There's no beam waste. No, there's no beam waste on the PAR DS3550 yeah. either. That, that given, given the type of optics that these things use, there shouldn't really be a beam waste. No. The, the optics are not that complicated. No. No, but, but you need anyway. to check it. But yeah, well, that's 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 us tested all the all three of these IR sources against BS five hundred six eight nine new standard. Thanks, Bruce. Yep. Okay, that was interesting, Russ, wasn't it? Yeah, fascinating uh, for us geeks. Yeah. <laughs> for nerds like us. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> well, tell you something. This nerd has burned his brain for the last three or four weeks, and this one trying to to figure out exactly how to, how to proceed and. Because we, not everybody it seems to accept that lasers can actually function as conventional lamps. Yes. We have got we have a bit of an issue with some testing laboratories not being willing to accept that you can have a laser acting as a conventional lamp. Yes. They don't seem to accept that uh, that part of the, the laser standard which allows you to classify or to test a lamp if it's used as a conventional lamp, they simply don't seem to accept that that can, can be the case. But it clearly is. So that's why that lamp has been tested and passed yeah. and meets the requirements. Yeah. So this this is lamp has been, according to Trevor, tells us that this lamp has been tested by at least one laboratory. The report has been seen by trading standards and accepted by trading standards and they have given him the go-ahead that there's no, he's nothing to worry about when he makes and sells these. These are absolutely legal for sale. Cool. So well Excellent. done, Trevor. I appreciate the work you've done. That's that's a good bit of work you've done, not just for yourself, but it means that you've basically opened the door for other people to do the same thing and have their torches and devices classified in the same way. Excellent. Thanks very much. Thanks, okay. Trevor. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Bruce.